Today on The Spot, no matter what your gaming tastes are, we've got your order filled. Whether it's a side of the latest news, a helping of this week on the Wii, or a plate full of new releases. But don't ruin your appetite just yet. We catch up with Sophia Tong in the Chow Kitchen, who puts Cook or Be Cooked to the test. We then check in with the guys working on Darksiders Wrath of War and go on location to see MAG, Sony's massive action game. Last but not least, we get a sneak peek at our new video player in this week's Community Spotlight and close out our day with Madden Ultimate Team and some trivia. All that and more today on The Spot. Hey everybody and welcome to Today on the Spot. I'm your host Chris Waters here on Tuesday, November 3rd, joined by my man Lark Anderson. And we're talking about games. We've got Mag coming, we got Mag on the show. We, we got Mag on the show. Uh, we got Darksiders, The Wrath of War, so. That's right, that, dude, yeah. that dude's got a big sword. Mag's got a big online gun shooting matches. It does, it does. And uh, we also have the implied threat of cannibalism with Sophia Tong. Mm -hmm. It's always kind of iffy to be around her sometimes. You're not really sure which way it's going to go. You'll no. find out in the segment we got on a little later. But first, we're going to throw it to our always first, always awesome new segment with Tor Thorson. Hey, everyone. It's your GameSpot News update for Tuesday, November 3rd. I'm Tor Thorson. Just in case you were wondering how popular Wii and DS games are, Nintendo decided to remind everyone by announcing worldwide sales figures for its top games. To nobody's surprise, the second sports minigame comp for the Wii, Wii Sports Resort, has been a major hit, selling nearly 7 million copies since its launch this summer. The original Wii Sports is no slouch itself, selling 50 million units, many of which were packed in with the Wii console in the US. Wii Play has sold over 24.4 million units to date, followed by Wii Fit's 22.5 million units, and Mario Kart Wii with 18.4 million units. Wii Fit Plus also proved limber at retail, selling 2.13 million units since launching this October. On the DS side, the top games are New Super Mario Bros. with 19.9 million in lifetime sales, followed by Mario Kart DS with 16.1 million. Also this week, the first trailer for Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time debuted, offering the same sort of big screen eye candy as producer Jerry Bruckheimer's Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy. The film's estimated $150 million budget is on full display, with dozens of effect shots and lavish set pieces, many of which were shot on location in Morocco. Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time stars Jake Gyllenhaal as the titular prince, who must keep a time-controlling dagger from the clutches of an evil vizier, played by Sir Ben Kingsley. Directed by Mike Newell, it was co-written by Jordan Mechner, who created the very first Prince of Persia game back in 1989, and the 2003 Sands of Time reboot. It's due out May 27th in the UK and May 28th in the US, aka Memorial Day weekend. Well, that's it, your GameSpot news update for Tuesday, November 3rd. For more headlines like these, head on over to news.gamespot.com. All right, thanks for the news update tour. Now we're gonna head on over to the Nintendo side of things and check out what's new on the Wii Shop channel. This week on Wii Shop channel, Street Fighter purists will be happy to know that the TurboGrafx-16 edition of Capcom's original 2D brawler called Fighting Street is now available through the Wii's Virtual Console for 800 Wii points or $8. Speaking of classics, Sega's Shoot 'em Up R-Type joins the Virtual Console for 500 Wii points or $5. Hitting the WiiWare channel are some family-friendly titles including Incredible Technologies Carnival Kings, costing 700 Wii points, and features a variety of amusement park-themed minigames for up to two. A-Team's Aha! I Got It! Escape Game is a puzzle-heavy adventure game that can be had for 500 Wii points, or $5. Nintendo's DSi Wear Shop is also in for a busy week. Ubisoft's Battle of Giants Dragon's Bronze Edition tasks gamers with exploring a mythical land as a magical dragon, hunting for 25 stolen bronze gems across 10 levels. The 800 DSi point title also lets up to four players compete in head-to-head -head combat. BitMedia has also released its portable strategy title, Viking Invasion, onto Nintendo's handheld system this week for 800 DSi points. The game sees players fending off Asgard's legions by constructing defenses and other fortifications across 10 levels, a campaign mode, a survival mode, and three difficulty settings. That's all the time we have. Be sure to check in every Tuesday as we bring you the latest this week on the Wii Shop channel. All right, folks, if you're looking to actually get your hands on a, on a hard copy of a game, your retail store shelves are the place to go. And we've got a whole new crop this week. Lark, what is your, what is your pick of the harvest this week? Uh, well, my personal favorite this week is Dragon Age Origins. It's out now. The review's up on the site. 
good game. Check it out for sure. But right now, why don't we just see what new releases are coming out this week? As confirmed last month, Dragon Age Origins will take wing on the PlayStation 3 alongside the Xbox 360 and PC editions on November 3rd. Billed as a dark, heroic fantasy role-playing game, Dragon Age Origins was first revealed in May 2004 and takes its cues from Bioware's acclaimed Baldur's Gate franchise. Those who purchase the game new will gain free entry to the Stone Prisoner and Blood Armor downloadable content at launch, and the Warden's Keep will also be available on day one. The Rhythm Game Wars continues this week, as both Activision and MTV Games launch new installments to their Guitar Hero and Rock Band franchises aimed at the younger set. Activision's pop-heavy band hero includes 65 songs on the Xbox 360, PS3, PlayStation 2, Wii, and the publisher said that gamers can import 61 songs from Guitar Hero 5. The DS edition features 30 tunes, as well as a tiny drum set peripheral compatible with only the light model of Nintendo's handheld. Jaundice blockheads not being far off from the rock and roll lifestyle, MTV Games has teamed with Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment on LEGO Rock Band. The Rhythm Game will be available for the Xbox 360, PS3, and Wii with a 45-song set list, while DS gamers can strum along to 25 tunes. More casual than its positively reviewed Need for Speed shift, the Wii and DS exclusive Nitro features cars with stylized appearance and controls friendly to rookies and experts alike. Power-ups are strewn across the raceway and a new graffiti system will factor into overall racing performance. On the Wii, Need for Speed Nitro can be played with the Wii Remote, Nunchuck, Racing Wheel, or the GameCube controller. With Ratchet & Clank adventuring to the PS3 last week, Sony will be bringing a new installment in its other platforming franchise, Jack & Daxter, The Lost Frontier, to the PS2 and PSP this week. For further details on the week's games, visit GameSpot's new releases page. Release dates are based on retailer listings and are subject to change. Another one of the new releases this week is Food Network Cook or Be Cooked. And we had the opportunity to check that out this week, didn't we, Chris? Uh, well, yeah, we actually spent, sent Sophia Tong downstairs to chow.com right, to and, uh, check it out. And But I'm kind of worried about what happens. Like, so if you don't cook, you are cooked? You are cooked. And if you don't cook up to the standards, then you are cooked also. It, it should, so needless to say, it's going to be an interesting segment. Let's go and check it out right now. I'm Sophia here and I've kind of taken over the chow kitchen downstairs and I'm joined by Ali who works here and we're gonna make some breakfast like more specifically bacon and eggs. We're showing off Food Network's Cook or Be Cook the Wii game. What the game does is like trying to simulate like real kitchen cooking so we're kind of doing a reality check here to make sure you know when we make bacon and eggs is it actually gonna come out the way it should on screen. So I've got my Wii Remote Nunchuck that's all I need for cooking and you've got I've got my pots and pans and I'm ready to go. All right let's do this. All right, so this is your Food Network kitchen, and your recipe is gonna be in the top left-hand corner. So the whole point of this is to actually multitask and make sure your food is ready on time. So according to this, eggs is gonna take eight minutes. So let's just start with eggs. And shake the nunchuck, my skillet jumps on, and Allie, she's Got already ahead of me. Skillet is on. Add oil to the skillet and swirl. So Allie's got the burner going, so now we're gonna crack some eggs. And with me, I'm gonna use the Wii remote. I have to tap it hard enough to not have it spill everywhere. There we go. So here, I'm adding salt and pepper. So you shake the Wii remote. You're salt and peppering now? Yeah. So do you not salt and pepper at this early? I don't. <laughs> I don't either. So now I'm turning on the burner to medium. Normally I turn it on as soon as I start putting the oil in to yeah, get the oil to heat up. To get it going. Okay, but the timer is ticking. It says, let it heat for about a minute. Let's look at bacon. Let's click over here. Okay. So place heavy bottom skillet on burner. It's easier to neatly place bacon in a cold skillet. Is that true? It's easier to place bacon on a cold skillet? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, you don't want to have grease splatter. splatter. So over here, my timer is still ticking down. So once it's done, I have to move on to the next step. Otherwise, I'm going to burn my eggs. Yours is still not steaming. I would have never taken these steps, but who knows. So it says about five minutes with the eggs covered. Do you normally cover eggs when you're... I don't. Yeah. All right, so my bacon is done, so time to flip it. I just use my imaginary tongs and flip the bacon with the Wii remote. Do you like your bacon crispy or? I do. Yeah. How do you like it? I'm usually, I don't know, I like soggy fries. I also don't mind soggy bacon. <laughs> I'm really weird like that. So I have 30 seconds left on my eggs. How are your eggs looking? 
Um, my eggs are looking done. Oh. <laughs> well. Bacon. Yeah, mine says I only have a minute before it's actually done. So you said yours is still gonna take a while? Yeah. So right now my eggs are done and kind of chilling on the platter. I guess I could have timed it better so that it comes out at the same time. But over on the left hand side here, it tells you the temperature of your food. So you want the food to come out while it's still hot. So bacon looking good on that end, swimming in its own grease. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Look at it bubbling. Okay, so it's ready. <laughs> so I'm removing Sweet. bacon okay. after just six minutes. So wow. it's impressive. All right, so our, my, at least on my end, it was apparently a success. So what did you think of uh, how this compared to real cooking? I think it was pretty close. Um, I think the timing was a little bit off, but again, how, how hot your, your yeah. pan was. It... Different factors, what kind of pan you're using. Totally. Thank you guys so much for letting us use your kitchen and cooking for us. And uh, so that was your look at Food Network, Cook or Be Cooked on the Wii. So as much as I like shooting dudes, I'm actually more of a fan of sorting them. And in this game, you sort all kinds of crazy stuff, mostly demons or something. That sounds good to me. Let's roll the demo right now. All right, it's time to take a look at Darksiders. I'm here with Craig Mitchell and Hayden Dalton from Vigil. We're taking a look at a game that's coming out in just a few months. There's got to be some people out there who have no idea what Darksiders is, so let's get them caught up. What is Darksiders all about? Sure. A quick breakdown of the story. You play War, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, mm -hmm. and you've essentially been blamed for triggering the apocalypse on Earth uh, too early. Right. Um, you're stripped of all your powers. You're put before the, uh, the Charred Council, who's sort of the intermediary between heaven and Earth. Mm -hmm. um, and they decide to send you back to Earth 100 years after the apocalypse um, to basically clear your name. Okay. Let's, let's get started with the, uh, the demo. Tell us where are we and what are we doing here? Absolutely. So uh, one of the story elements in the game is that you need to take down uh, four of the uh, chosen of the, uh, of the destroyer, who's kind of the, the main boss in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're here to basically collect their hearts and bring it back to the demon Samael. So what we're seeing right here is one of the dungeons and War is on his way to uh, hunt down the uh, spider boss uh, and her name is Silitha. And Hayden, I see all the, the spider webs. This is her doing, I'm assuming. It is, yeah. She likes to uh, collect bodies as trophies and she's like a keeper of memories as well. She keeps like angels and humans and kind of absolutely all web webbed up in this place. And what you're seeing here is uh, Hayden's using some of his gear items. Uh, that is the uh, ghost hook, which I think you can show right here. Mm -hmm. You know, and that basically it's a traversal item. It allows you to get to different areas of the game. And uh, this is sort of customization here. You, there's a lot of options for how you use stuff. Right? Absolutely. So what you're seeing right here is actually the uh, inventory item. You can go back there real quick. First, we kill the spider. Yeah, there you go. Spider's kill good, yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, slow down. We can slow down time here. Like that. Oh, uh, so a little uh, temporal distortion there. Absolutely. And looks like he's got a sieve in, in addition to the sword. Yeah. What's that all about? So that's actually one of his uh, secondary weapons. So the sword is your primary weapon. You're going to have it on you at all times. Uh -huh. uh, you can customize it, you know, level it up, uh, make it all powerful. Um, but as well, you've got these secondary weapons. Right there, you're seeing the scythe. You know, it has a little bit of a longer range, you know, more, you know, you kind of protect all around you. Uh, you also have your uh, Tremor Gauntlet, which is basically your fist that's really powerful. You can knock enemies back. You know, you can use it for some different uh, puzzle solving elements. There you go. <laughs> big punch, big punch. Uh, so what we're going to do now is he's going to use his uh, ghost hook to knock one of these uh, mini spiders down. Mm -hmm. Something tells me that spider doesn't have long delays. <laughs> <laughs> Not as long as Wall's around. Yeah. So while this ghost hook, which is primarily meant to be, you know, a puzzle solving and exploration item, can also be used as combat. Uh -huh. So as you saw there, you know, he can pull himself towards the spider. You know, with some of the smaller items, you can actually pull the enemies towards you and, you know, do some quick kills. Okay. So what he's going to show you right here is how he can use a variety of weapons from the sword to the scythe to his fist uh, to dispatch this enemy. Because it's interesting, you can use that ch uh, the, uh, the the grappling hook to sort of chain combos. Right? Absolutely, to keep attacks just going and going. Oh, there, there you go. go. Oh boy, finish him off there. 
Before we move on, can we take a look at the customization screen we, we sort of hit on it earlier? So this game is deep. I mean, it's it's really hard to show the depth of this game, obviously, in a you know five minute demo. Right. But you know, if we can kind of scroll through these different menus, you know, you've got your your passive abilities, you know, sort of things that that happen naturally throughout the game that War has. You have your different gear and your equipment, uh, your wrath abilities up there. Um, you know, you have four different wrath abilities from the blade geyser. You know, there's uh, stone skin. And then you also have consumables, so you know things like health, wrath. Uh, you know they help uh, war get those things back. All right, guys. So now it's time to put all those weapons we saw to, to proper use. We skipped a little bit ahead of in the game, and uh, where are we now, Craig? Cool. So we just passed the uh, mini boss, mm -hmm. and Hayden's take us into this uh, room right here where he's going to battle a uh, different variety of enemies. Okay. Uh, and he's got his ghost hook. He's got his scythe, his sword. Um, he's got his uh, wrath powers. We actually have a uh, pretty cool Wrath Power we're going to show you here in a sec. Okay. And just for those who don't know, what is Wrath Power? So, I guess the best way to explain it is it's your, uh, it's your mana. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as you kill enemies, you are collecting their souls. We have an in-game currency system. Um, so when you collect blue souls, that's kind of your currency. You have yellow souls, which is your, uh, your Wrath. Mm -hmm. And then uh, green souls would be health. Got it. Um, so as you continue to build up wrath, you can unleash you know, special powers. So you have your stone skin, uh, your blade geyser, uh, and then we have uh, we also have War's Havoc form, which uh, Hayden's going to get into here in a second. That's, that's the, actually yeah, yeah that's, that's the, the glowing thing. thing in the in the top left. Got it. Uh, just begging to be pushed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's you guys out so, you know, the, the gear items can really be used for multiple purposes. Uh -huh. You know, like we said, you, you saw it earlier with some puzzle, you know, some different uh, traversal stuff. Right here you're seeing it with combat, you know, he can pull the enemies towards him. Uh, you'll notice there's, you know, the B button over each of the, you know, some of the enemies. That means you've weakened the enemy enough to do a quick kill. Uh -huh. You know, there's no quick time events in the game, it's not, you know, not about that, it's just a, you know, quick kill. But there are incredibly brutal kills in this Indeed. game. All right, so here All we right. go. This is the uh, form we were talking about. And essentially, War is uh, impenetrable at this point. Yep. You know, he's doing a lot more damage with his strikes. Um, you know, it's a good sort of get out of jail free card. You know, if you're surrounded by enemies, you know, it's getting pretty hairy. You buff this guy out. And this is pretty much his battle form. It only lasts temporarily, but it's effective when it lasts. Absolutely, yeah. It, cool. it can pretty much get you out of any bind. All right, so final question, of course, is when's the game coming out and what platform? Dark Sires is coming out on January 5th of this next year, and it's going to be for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Starting the year out right. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Hayden, for being here. If you want to know more about Dark Siders, you can check out the game space at GameSpot.com. Now, some of you folks may have noticed at the end of our last show, we gave you a preview of what games are coming on this show. And a bunch of you were good enough to send us in questions about one game in particular, Mag. And I brought Sean McInnes on set here to answer some of those questions. He's the man with the plan, and he is also not Lark Anderson. What a coincidence. I developed Mag personally, so I know everything there is to know about he it. He also cannot be trusted generally, but we've restrained him in his answers to the questions, so they will actually be true to the best of his knowledge. So. Let's start them off. Woody Henry from New Zealand writes, will there be a beta for MAG, and if so, when? There, uh, there's been a private beta for quite a while now, and about a month ago they opened up to the public. Um, for a while it was restricted to core subscribers on mm -hmm. PSN, but now they've opened up to people who have pre-ordered the game. So yes, there was, is, and will be a beta, to answer your question. Way to flex those verb tenses. Thanks, yep. Thanks for giving him that opportunity, Woody. Uh, next up, Paul Tan from Cebu writes, uh, will MAG have downloadable content? Will Mag have downloadable content? Yeah. They have not announced anything quite yet, but Sony has been very generous with DLC in the past, and okay. this is one of their first party games, so I would not be surprised at all to see quite a few new maps. That seems like a logical assumption. His, his follow-up question is, uh, will Asia have a dedicated server? Region-wise, how are they breaking this up, do you know? Yeah, uh, they've got some pretty revolutionary server technology behind MAG because it is 256 players, which is a lot. That's a lot. That is a lot, uh, and so they have clusters of server farms around the world, and Asia is a pretty big continent, so they will have servers there. Awesome, all right. Next up, Oli Wahlberg from Marrakech. Uh, 
Sorry about that, buddy. Quit while you're ahead. Okay, how deep is the character customization in MAG? It's pretty deep. Um, not as far as like visual appearance goes. It's not like oblivion. Uh-huh. You know, nice. uh, you're not gonna be able to customize your skin or your eye color, your skin c color, and you won't give yourself elf ears. That might be DLC. Oh. Um, but you know, you can choose templates. Uh, you can, you know, customize your look pretty well. Most of it has to do with the weapons that you're using. You can okay. add all sorts of attachments to your weapons, like scopes, grenade launchers, and all that sort of thing. Mods and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Sounds, uh, that sounds good. And here's our last question from Joshua Prize in Winnipeg. So do you just pay for the disc in MAG, or do you also have to pay a subscription fee of any kind? MAG is quite about as big as a lot of MMOs, but you're not gonna be charged a subscription fee like a lot of MMOs. Yeah, you just buy the game, you've got That's your good. free PlayStation Network account, you pop it in, you're playing right away, no monthly fee for MAG. Fantastic. All right, Sean, well, uh, much appreciated coming on to answer those questions. Thanks to you folks for sending those questions in. Now we're gonna take a jump to a segment where Sean actually went and got all this information from and show you some footage of the game. So let's roll that right now. Hey everybody, Sean McInnes here. Now today, Sony has invited us down to have an extended look at the MAG public beta, and I'm joined currently by Seth Luisi from Sony, who's here to give us a little inside look at it. Seth, uh, MAG is obviously more than just a really, really huge online shooter. It's got quite a lot of persistence, persistency to it, so it you know tracks players' progress over time. How does that work? Yes, when you first start playing the game, you select which PMC you want to be with. So we have Valor, Raven, and Sever. Once you select them and you create your character, you have a career with that PMC. So you go in, you play the game, you gain experience points. As you gain experience points, you unlock skill points. And you can use those skill points to unlock different abilities, weapons, weapon attachments, uh, and other gear items. So that allows for a level of persistence as you play through the game. You're able to unlock more weapons, more abilities, and more skills skills as you play through it. Now, there's a bit more to it than just unlocking gear. There's a, a whole squad leader system and the squad leader actually unlocks abilities as well, right? Yes, the leadership component to MAG is a very large component to the game. So when you play the game, you're actually thrown into a squad, an eight-man squad, and there's a squad leader for every squad. So the squad leader is going to be giving you objectives as you play through the game. He's going to be giving you fragos, fragmentary orders to take out different bunkers, different walls, different artillery, anti-aircraft. So the squad leader sort of guides you through, he assigns objectives, and if you complete those objectives, you actually get double the number of experience points that you would normally get. As you play through the game and if you become a squad leader and you give uh, good objectives that your squad can actually accomplish, you'll gain leadership points. And with those leadership points, you'll be able to progress to platoon leader who controls four eight-man squads and then the OIC who actually is in charge of four platoons, so 128 players. Well, Seth, it looks like a lot of fun. Once that beta is over, when are players going to be able to pick up MAG for the PlayStation 3? MAG is released on January 26th. Thank you very much. There you have it, your look at the public beta for MAG. Stay tuned for more. Folks, now we got a preview of one of our big site enhancements that's coming up, AKA our sweet new video player. It's got higher definition, faster streams, and all sorts of bells and whistles to make your video viewing experience that much better. Jody Robinson has the scoop in our community spotlight. Hey there, this is Jody Robinson, GameSpot's community manager. In this week's Community Spotlight, I'll show you the beta of our new video player, remind you about the Forza Motorsport 3 game night, and we'll also check in with the Member Spotlight. Let's get started. GameSpot's new video player is now available to subscribers who would like to participate in the beta. The video player sports a large screen, higher bit rates, and more options that will help you streamline your video experience on GameSpot. First off, you'll notice the player is much bigger. On top of that, we're opening up more bit rates and we're upgrading our HD player from 1400K to 2000K. And now, HD is even easier to get to. Just click on the HD button and the player will magically expand on the page. There's also a number of streaming options that are available to you. Click on Menu and Advanced Options to display all streaming options and bit rates. The streaming option includes progressive download, dynamic streaming, and static streaming. Progressive download is the option you may be most used to. This means you'll be downloading the video ahead of time when you're watching it. As a handy reminder, the bitrate indicator in the lower right will let you know what bitrate you're currently set at. 
If you're watching a longer video and prefer to jump around a bit more, try the other streaming options. Static streaming will stream the video at the bitrate you have set. If you're running into buffering issues, try switching to a lower bitrate or changing back to progressive download. The dynamic streaming option is similar to static streaming, but in the mode the player will decide what the best bitrate is for you, based on your bandwidth and processing speed, and it will automatically change during playback. GameSpot members are also welcome to post feedback by going to any of the beta video pages or by checking on the site enhancements forum. Keep an eye out on our new video player as we roll out more improvements in the future. The next game night will be Forza 3 Motorsport, scheduled for November 10th. GameSpot US and GameSpot UK editorial staff have set aside time to sport their customized paint jobs while they burn some rubber with all of you in the process. The current staff roster includes Justin Calvert, Brian Eckberg, Alex Sassoon Kobe, and Mark Walton. But I'm sure there will be a lot more that will drop by. Check out the game night page for details about how you can participate during your time zones. You might also see appearance of GameSpot Australia staff as well. This week's member spotlight goes to Tiz Wayne for his blogs about attending the London MCM Expo. Tiz Wayne has dreamed about becoming a game journalist for years, and it just goes to show that he's making his dream come reality. His blog shares his experience at the Expo, along with his thoughts about Bayonetta, Tekken 6, and LEGO Rock Band. You can also find a couple of pictures of the event check out his blog on the forums page. That's all for this week's Community Spotlight. Be sure to drop by the Spam Filter blog for the latest community news. This is Jody Robinson signing off. Folks, last week we showed you a look at Madden Arcade, and this week we got some more new Madden goodness for you. Madden Ultimate Team. Let's check it out right now. Madden. My name is Josh Lumen. I'm a senior game designer for Madden NFL 10. We're talking about Madden Ultimate Team. It's a brand new premium downloadable content game mode for Madden. It's absolutely free to play, so uh, that's something we're really excited about. And it's, it's basically all about building your ultimate team. So you play games, you earn coins, and you take those coins and buy packs of cards or bid on cards in an auction like eBay type system. And you get better cards and build your players. And it's a big feature in Madden. Once you get the update to Madden, you'll actually download the game mode and it'll show up in your Madden main menu. When you select it from the main menu, you'll go into a completely separate mode that allows you to play Ultimate Team and play your games from there. So you'll be effectively out of the rest of Madden. So the first time you log on to Madden Ultimate Team, you're going to be asked to name your team. Then you're actually going to be shown a tutorial that you can walk through and understand the basics of the game. After that, you'll be given a starter pack, which is going to give you enough players, coaches, uniforms, playbooks, and stadium to basically go in and play your first game. Now, obviously, it's a starter pack, so you're going to get some pretty basic cards, some kind of lower level players. There's a good chance you'll be given one good player in that pack. Then you can go in, take that team, and play online or play against the CPU, and start building your team from there. You know, getting it better, earning coins, and buying more cards to improve your team and get the ultimate team eventually. So it's Madden Ultimate Team. Uh, we're looking at a early spring release. Uh, we haven't finalized the date yet, but uh, it should be, you know, late December, early January, hopefully. Um, and uh, again, it's absolutely free. So. Um, it's premium downloadable content that's going to cost you nothing at all. So you can uh, get a brand new feature in Madden and, and kind of sit down and build your ultimate team. And now it's trivia time and today's lucky winner can win a Nerf gun. This thing is way more advanced than the Nerf guns I used to play with when I was a kid. Uh, it's modular, you can break it down into all sorts of different bits. It's got a clip that comes out, it's got like a red light beam sight. The whole thing is pretty advanced and it also has a nice unlock uh, available for the Nerf End Strike game coming out for the Wii a little bit later on. Uh, so if you want this gun, or yes, let's call it a gun, it's a Nerf gun, answer this question. All you gotta do is list all the Nerf licensed games that have been released. Give us a list of those, submit it in the module on the side of the page, or send us an email at onthespot at gamespot.com, and you could be painting your targets red and beaning them with foam darts in no time. All right, folks, that's gonna about do it for this chock-full episode of Today on the Spot. That was, that was really a lot of stuff. 
Yeah, we had, we had guns, we had swords, and we had cannibalism. And, and what's not to like about all that stuff, especially combined? Combined in the magical mixture that is on the spot. Tune in Thursday for another all new episode or be cooked. For everyone here on the crew, I'm Chris Waters. Mark Anderson. Have a great week, y'all. He will do that. I I'm not a very want to check. Eat. We're going to look at what's new releases is this this week. <laughs> oh, hey, this is. <laughs> Come back on Thursday when we check out a demo for the Saboteur from Pandemic Studios. We chat up the folks from Perfect World Entertainment and see what's in store for players, and then we'll get you up to date on the latest happenings on Xbox Live. See you there.